Hi guys, it's Ken Boy with the Accounting Accidentally website, and what I'd like to talk about today is the Offer and Compromise Program through the IRS, the Effective Tax Administration Filing Approach. So, OIC is a heavily marketed strategy. I'm sure you've seen television commercials and other ads to reduce tax liabilities. I highly recommend that you use an enrolled agent or a CPA to guide you through this complex process. And this article talks about what OIC is, why offers are rejected, three approaches to justify the offer, and how to specifically use the Effective Tax Administration, or ETA, approach. Tax delinquency is a huge issue as of fiscal 18. Over 14 million individual tax returns had a balance totaling $128 billion. Huge, huge issue. And you'll note that of the 59,000 offers and compromise submitted, less than half were accepted. So, why are these offers being rejected? It really boils down to two things. The application is incomplete, and in that case, the IRS may return the data or set it aside to work on something else that they can complete. The other reason the taxpayer is not in compliance due to unfiled tax returns, but note that a current year return with a valid extension is considered to be in compliance. The reasons for the program, it allows the IRS to collect more money in less time and it uses less IRS staff time. They can collect money from taxpayers who would otherwise never pay, people who simply go off the grid. Receive payments from sources that would otherwise not be tapped. Maybe a family loan is taken out to set up the offer and compromise and fund it. And it is far cheaper and less expensive and less time consuming than trying to seize and sell taxpayer property. There's two important tax forms. Again, I suggest you go to an enrolled agent or a CPA to get this done. The 656 is the offer and the terms that you're proposing. The longer and more involved form is the Form 433, Collection Information for Wage Earners and Self-Employed Individuals. This applies, this program applies to both individual returns and people who own and operate businesses. There are three types of filings, doubt as to liability, which is in a different post that you can find on my site, effective tax administration, which we discuss here, and doubt as to collectability, which is discussed in a later blog post and video. ETAs are rarely approved. With this filing, there is not a doubt that the liability exists, and you must fill out the collection information statement 433. The here are the justifications in these bullet points. It demonstrates compelling public policy because of the nature of the individual situation, and I'll give you an example in a minute. Deals with overall fairness and equity. The taxpayer must demonstrate facts that justify the exceptional circumstances, and the taxpayer must have equity or reasonable collection potential to pay the full liability. So in this case, the person does have assets or equity that could be tapped to make the payment. So to start the process, when you fill out the 656, you go to Section 3, Reason for the Offer, check that you're using the ETA option, and explain your circumstances. So here's an example, and these are sort of obscure. It may be appropriate for a taxpayer who is old, ill, or frail. So here's my example. A physically disabled person owns a home and needs the customized home to accommodate for the disability. Selling the home would make it difficult to care for the disabled taxpayer. The taxpayer has no ability to earn income or make payments on another home. So they need to stay in the home, and the home is the asset. Unusual, not approved that often. Important point here is that the IRS manual is different from the IRS code. The IRS manual, which guides IRS employees, requires you to be in compliance to qualify for an ETA offer. However, the IRS code does not have this provision. As a result, the tax court has overturned some ETA filings that have been rejected by the IRS. In one case, the taxpayer had several years of unfiled returns. In another, the taxpayer had not paid the current year. But both taxpayers were otherwise in compliance for an ETA. So, Documents that must be included in addition to the ones I've already told, uh, mentioned, an application fee, 
and a power of attorney giving your enrolled agent power of attorney. If there's two spouses, you need two of the forms. Some key provisions for all offers and compromised. When the offer is made, it remains open until the IRS accepts, rejects, counters, or returns in writing. And you need to keep track of these dates because the clock starts running when you submit it. If the IRS accepts an OIC, you can't contest it. They will most likely file a lien or keep a lien in place until full payment is made in compliance with the OIC. And if you default, the client defaults, the IRS will attempt to collect the full balance plus penalties and interest. It's also important that you note that IRS may speak with third parties, including the taxpayer's bank, employer, insurance company, other people. Why are these OICs rejected? Again, documentation is missing or not supplied in a timely manner. So, where do you go from here? Find an expert, an enrolled agent, or a CPA. Discuss your options with the tax professional and supply all the retired required documentation. Keep in mind as we finish up here that you can click in the article and find the tax resolution series and get a discounted fee if you need that sort of continuing education on tax resolution. It's a great course. Also, Lambers has a variety of online training for enrolled agents and you can also click through, you can click on these links or you can find links in this article itself. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.